the Usos defeat Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa at Money in the Bank, the bloodline implosion continues. And with the final strands of what's remaining, Roman seeks special counsel. My tribal chief, we're under attack. We need to put a shield around the championship. Shield, huh? That's why they call you the wise man. Get it done. And Heyman pulls out his phone and says, Call Seth Rollins. And the phone call from Heyman turns into a face-to-face -face conversation with the visionary. But he doesn't really see the vision. And he says, <laughs> Oh, this is so great. Roman's family crumbling around him. So you come to little old me. Honestly, I'm flattered. I really am, but God, you have a short memory. I'm not too fond of your boy. So I hope you have a plan B. <laughs> Seth, wait. Please, hear me out. You're having trouble with Finn Balor and the Judgment Day, right? You only just beat him at Money in the Bank. And you know he's getting darker and more demonic. And when that demon rises, you don't want to be by yourself. Listen, you and Roman are at the top of your game. The tribal chief. The visionary. Imagine joining forces to hold on to something you've worked so hard for. All I ask is that you think about it. And Seth thinks, and then he walks off. He could be considering reforming one of the greatest factions of all time, but while he mulls it over, the implosion of another is intensifying. The Usos are more intent than ever on stopping Roman Reigns' title run, and they are all over him every single chance they get. Solo isn't immune either, and Jimmy has some bombshell news. He says, after our win at Money in the Bank, it's been made official. It's going to be the Tribal Chief versus Main Event Jey Uso. The right-hand man is no more. You're going to be looking at the new Universal Champion, the real Tribal Chief, and Solo You'll make the right choice. You'll jump off this sinking ship and you'll join your real family. We forgive you, because you're real blood. He isn't. The walls are closing in on Roman. His shield is cracked, but not quite broken. And he's not alone, because it's happening to Seth too. Judgment Day are beating him down on Raw. They always hunt in packs. And we find out that Rawlins is going to have to defend his championship in a rematch at SummerSlam against Finn Balor. And as he's laid out by all the members, they get out of the ring. And with good reason. Because we get an insight into just what is in store for Rawlins. It's time for Seth to face the real Finn Balor from seven years ago. The same entity that defeated him. And he struggles. He throws everything at him. He tries to beat him down. But the demon is unrelenting. The demon is unwavering. It's easily Rawlins' biggest test since becoming champion. But this Seth has evolved over the last seven years as well. And he fights all the way back into it. And that brings out Judgment Day. But very quickly, they are wiped out. It's Solo Sokoa. And he has Samoan spikes for both. But as he advances towards the ring, someone approaches from behind. Bella sees this, and the demon flies, but Solo moves, and Rhea gets collected instead. This is a disaster. But Bella knows he needs to stay on task. He slides in the ring, but as he does, boom! He gets nailed with a curb stomp, and another, and then one final one to seal the deal. Rollins wins with the assist of Solo Sokoa. But the question is, did Rollins even ask for this? Was this his call? Or is this part of Paul Heyman and Roman Reigns' pitch to Seth Rollins to put a shield around their championships? We don't know the answer yet, but we do get two men who think they do. It's Jimmy and Jay. They rush out to the ring and they're hunting Seth Rollins. But Solo instead pulls him out of the way. And once again, Jimmy is yelling at Solo saying, you're really with them, huh? Your blood, we can forgive you. It's not too late but it will be soon. It's emotional, but the same question remains. Was this all part of Roland's plan? Or is it purely just trying to get him on board for the reunion of the Shield? 
Well, we're gonna find out up next in the main event. But in between all of this, a clip from TMZ goes viral. John Moxley has stopped at an airport and asked what he thinks about the potential Shield reunion. And he says, the what? The Shield? <laughs> I don't give a shit. I wouldn't even trust either of those guys. They're probably just gonna turn on each other anyway, but you want, actually, you want my thoughts on something? One thing I do know, and you can print this, make this your little headline or whatever, the BCC would beat all their asses. And after the typical Moxley response, it's time for that main event between Jey Uso and Roman Reigns, and it doesn't get more personal. The civil war at Money in the Bank resulted in Jey Uso earning the ultimate crack at the tribal chief, and with Solo and Jimmy in either corner, it's emotional and it's intense. Jay throws everything at Roman, and interestingly, Solo stays out of it. And because he does, so does Jimmy. They let him fight it out. But it has everyone questioning whether Solo is considering joining his brothers or leaving the island of relevancy. Well, as the match culminates, he gets the ultimate test. It's a familiar story. The ref is down. Solo gets on the apron. And with that, so does Jimmy. And he looks right across at him and says, it ain't too late. It ain't too late to do the right thing. Come back home with us. Don't die on his shield. Don't do this for him. Do it for us. The real blood. Solo is conflicted, but now Roman grabs Jay and locks in a guillotine. The same move that has put him away in the past. And Solo gets in the ring. Is he gonna break it up? Jimmy quickly gets in the ring as well. We know he will break it up. Solo chooses to reinforce Roman's shield. Jay goes to sleep, and just after, so does his brother. Solo gets him out of the ring, leaving the referee to see Roman with Jay, and he calls the match. Solo stands by the tribal chief, the man who bought him from NXT, the man who didn't forget about him in NXT. Solo makes up two of the three required to forge this new shield. And with Jimmy and Jay incapacitated, the third joins. Rollins has made his decision, and his decision is to break the shield again. Roman turns to him and says, you're not the only one here with a plan B, Seth. I want everyone to meet the third member of the new Samoan Shield. The Samoan Werewolf, Jacob Fatu. This isn't just a shield. This is a Samoan army. Rawlins is left injured with nothing left. And the trio is complete. But not as we expected. Roman Reigns, Solo Sokoa, and Jacob Fatu. A shield forged by blood. You all thought I wouldn't have a plan? You all thought I'd put my faith in someone outside the family? It's funny though. Because just like Jimmy and Jay, I once considered Seth's family. We've been through a hell of a lot together. We came up together. But I knew I couldn't trust him. Not like I trust my family. My real family, like Solo. And especially like Jacob. So you aren't just looking at the shield, you're looking at a Samoan shield. Bound by decades of dangerous ancestry. Bound by blood. And blood will be shed. There will be no survivors. Seth was just the start. He's on the shelf. And now it's time to teach Jay and Jimmy a hard lesson. It's time for payback. The Usos versus the Samoan Shield. Jacob and Solo. The Usos have Heyman. And before Roman can even say anything, Jimmy lays him out. And they throw him off to the side and Jay says, that's our answer to your little challenge. We aren't going anywhere. Three on two, it is what it is. Because just like Roman hiding behind his little shield, 
payback is gonna be a bitch. The last few weeks have been utter chaos as the Shield of the Usos have gone to battle. It's all about payback. Payback for the disrespect the Usos faced under the reign of Roman in the bloodline. But with Roman soldiers being more dangerous than ever, this match is brutal. Fatu shows exactly why he was brought in. He dominates the match. And he and Solo could be the most intimidating team we've seen in years. But Jimmy and Jay didn't come this far just to come this far. They have the continuity on their side and they double team their way to getting the match on a knife's edge. Jimmy flies off and he hits a splash on Solo. He picks him up, sends him into the corner and it's time. The Usos hit the 1D. But as Jay goes for the cover, Roman storms the ring, breaks up the pin and spears him. They never cared about the result, but they do care about decimating their problems. Jacob Fatu grabs Jimmy and slams the steel stairs into his face and disgustingly then throws them down onto his body. But back in the ring, Roman and Solo have Jay. And this is eerily similar to how SummerSlam went off the air. After weeks on the sidelines, he returns for payback. Fatu goes after him, but he gets a chair to the gut. Rawlins then hits the ring. Solo gets a chair. Seth then runs at Roman, and he gets collected as well. But he's got another one for Solo. And then Roman is able to dip out of the ring. He doesn't want any more of a fired up Seth Rawlins. But he won't be able to avoid him long. It seems as though the Usos now have an architect. And he's going to look to construct the demise of Roman Reigns and his shield. And he begins with a major challenge. Rawlins starts off by saying, Paul Heyman once offered me a shield. And he cited that it was to protect my championship. But it wasn't, was it? It was to protect Roman Reigns. And not just to protect Roman Reigns' title, but to protect Roman Reigns. Because he's always needed it, hasn't he? These guys know all about that. And I'm not cleaning all of this. I've had outside help my whole career. But the difference is, I've changed. And then Jay steps in front of Rollins and says, F all this. No more talk. It started with civil war. It ends with a war. Survivor Series, war games, we end it. <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. The men who want to break Roman teaming with the man who once broke the shield. And Roman, as always, has a response. He calls out Seth Rollins and he says, Seth, I know you've always been jealous. I know you've always wanted to be me. You've always wanted my spot, right? And you've been given every chance. They even made you a special title, a consolation prize for you because you couldn't take mine. Rollins got baited in. He couldn't hear any more of it and he gets to ringside, but he's wiped out by Jacob Vartu. He then gets thrown in the ring, and Roman says, Solo, lower the cage. We then see backstage in Gorilla, Solo has Jimmy down, and he's also forcing a staff member to lower the cage. Back in the ring, Seth is trying to fight back, but Roman is too much, and now he's one on one. Jacob Vartu is standing guard, and Roman goes to work. Who's hiding now, Seth? Answer me. You think I need a shield? I am the shield! I was always the shield. But then at ringside, Fatu gets blindsided with a super kick. It's Jay! He's not gonna let any of this happen. He scales the cage, he reaches the top, Reigns has no idea, and Jay leaps off the cage onto Reigns. The place comes unglued. Jay comes to Rawlins rescue this time, and now Roman is two on one. Jay hits him with a super kick, and then Rawlins lines him up and nails him with a curb stomp. Fatu is down, Reigns is down, and backstage we see Solo is now down. Just when you thought the island of relevancy was going to be burned to the ground, Roman puts up a shield. But there is still fight in the Usos yet. Roman's former tribe versus his new shield will go down at Survivor Series.
the civil war has degenerated into an all-out war, and now we've entered the confines of war games to settle it. And it's not about championships, it's about pride, it's about brotherhood, both blood and the shield. And the blood is shed in this one. It was always inevitable. All six men absolutely tear each other apart. They use everything they can find at their disposal. Forget about advantages. None of that matters now that all six are in the ring, but it does come down to one key decision. Jacob Fatu locks in a guillotine on Jimmy. He's wrenching away. Roman locks one in on Seth. He's fading. And then we see a battered Jay face to face with Solo. And Jay knows that this is his last chance. He says, Solo, come home, man. Just come home. Do it for your family. And Solo surprisingly says, okay, I will. Solo locks it in on Jay, just like Roman did to start all of this. It's heartbreaking. It's full circle. All three are out. The match is over. A new force has arrived with very familiar undertones. Roman went from being a chief without a tribe to a Samoan soldier with a shield. And if you like this video, you'll have to see this one next.